Hey. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. And a happy new year. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of the Adam and Chris Show. I'm St. Adam. I'm Chris Mouse. If you can't tell, it's that time of year again. It's that time of year. If you can't tell by judging my tax fucking Tax season. Hat. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> Nobody no. likes tax season. Well, we welcome you to the Adam and Chris Christmas special. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of things we can talk about around this time of year. You get so many things entertainment-wise, um... Food-wise... Guarantee you've probably heard uh, that song by Wham, Last Christmas I Gave You My Heart, about 50 fucking times already. You know, I saw the greatest meme where they had um, the bad guy from Temple of Doom holding that heart, (laughs) and it had the lyrics to that song in it. But while we're here, let's let's dig right into it. First thing that we want to get into are movies that you watch around this time. Everyone likes to watch holiday movies. Um... Some good, some bad. There's obvious ones, Christmas Vacation, you know, of what, what's the one you shoot your eye out, you know, oh, Christmas, Christmas Story. Story. You know, you have your obvious ones like that, but we're going to delve into some not so obvious ones. Oh, I, yes. I chose five, Chris chose five. Um, Chris, do you want to do yours first? Oh, yeah. All well, right, first off, we're going to start it. with Ginger Dead Man. A film starring Gary Busey's crazy fucking voice. Um, as, as a 12 inch tall satanic cookie. Yes. <laughs> who goes around killing people at a baked goods store. Um, Gary Busey. Gary Busey at his most Busey. <laughs> <coughs> um, basically, the plot is he went to this store at one point and shot a couple people there. His mom got his body after they executed him. Put, cremated they, him. Cremated him. Put the ashes into a uh, a dough. They made him into a ginger <laughs> dead, a gingerbread man, and he tries to kill everyone. You know the funny thing is, I think Busey actually was ad libbing a lot of his lines. If you go back and watch that, like that whole thing where he's going off on that rat. Oh yeah. Well, I think like, the whole they, movie they just was left, ad-libbed itself. They left the mic on. They're like, "This eh. is gold. No matter what he says, it's gold." <laughs> so, ginger dead man. What else you got? All right, so another movie, uh, <clears throat> Jack Frost, B movie, Killer Snowman, fucking Elizabeth. Sh- was, was Elizabeth Shue? No, it was it Liz- Shannon Elizabeth? Shannon Elizabeth, fucking El- <laughs> Shannon Elizabeth. She gets done by a snowman. It's so low budget, though. Like you can tell, she's. It's like an inflatable snowman. She's holding it and she's moving it for it because they don't have the special effects to really do that scene. It's so cheesy looking, but. It's so goofy, like the whole movie's so goofy, it's funny. You know, it's like a more low-rent leprechaun, if that tells you anything. Yep. What else you got? So, now we're going to move into some of the higher quality movies. Uh, Gremlins, one of my all-time favorite monster movies, or creature features. Gremlins is great. And, you know, really, when you look at it, nothing really represents some of that... uh, Christmas spirit, you know, where you have people running around punching each other for Tickle Me Elmo's and stuff like that, as gremlins. It's, you know, it's, it captures the wrong side of the holiday, but a side we all know too well. Uh, Gizmo is great. Everyone, he's adorable, but uh, Stripe? You know, I, I thought the gremlins themselves were adorable. That scene where they're singing Christmas carols yeah. or watching Snow White, I'm like, <laughs> how can you hate them? Yeah, God, I love that movie. <laughs> Next movie I'll discuss. Batman Returns. The movie that got Tim Burton off the Batman films. Uh, some people, it's the, probably the most underrated Batman movie. Um, some people, uh, you know, it's one of the darkest. Uh, Penguin and Catwoman are both very dark characters. There's uh, Penguin's death scene is creepy, mm-hmm. to say the least. Um, it's a Quite a violent film. Uh, at one Penguin's point, look is pretty creepy, too. Yeah, and some of the shit he does in there, you're just like, wow, that's crazy. Of course, the one of the most famous parts is when he's like uh, talking to a reporter. He's like, well, at least my nose is not gushing blood. And the reporter's like, what? And he bites his nose. And he bleeds, makes him bleed everywhere. But his plot at the end, 
He has two plots. Batman foils the first one, where he wants to kidnap the firstborn of uh, the richest people in Gotham. That, wasn't that the second plot? Wasn't no, the first plot? First, wasn't no. the first plot him becoming mayor? Well, I guess yeah. That's that's that's, that's the second plot. Then the third plot was the penguins with the rockets on their backs. Which, you know, that also was adorable. <laughs> yeah. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer, you know, you can make an argument for best Catwoman. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer yeah. is definitely I think on that she list. Is. Um, great movie. It's based during Christmas time. And uh, Danny Elfman's score just naturally has like some Christmas type tones to it. Mm-hmm. So you mix that in with the Christmas theme and he gets to go even further over that line. Oh, yeah. Uh, so then we come to my last film that I'd like to discuss, Dennis Leary's In the Ref. One of the funniest fucking movies you'll ever see. A, <laughs> a, a cat burglar <laughs> kidnaps a divorcing couple as their in-laws are about to come visit them for Christmas time. And he has to pretend to be their marriage therapist. Um, it's yeah. absolutely hysterical. He swears so much in it. Um, Those people make you want to swear so much. I mean, it's like it has some of the most unlikable people mm-hmm. in the movie, but they're they're unlikable for the right reasons. I mean, this is supposed to be a miserable family, and the most redeeming member is a cat burglar. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think Justin Long wasn't he in that um, real early on. Um, I, I, I don't know J.K. So. Simmons has a J.K. Brief... Simmons was yeah. Um, movie's great. But what what was the uh, what was the little note you have on there? Oh, it's the enjoyably miserable. It, it Everybody's is. miserable in it, but it's freaking hilarious because it's like watching Always Sunny in Philadelphia. There's a lot of bad people here, and they don't really get a one-up. Um, <laughs> I love when... Uh, so when he's breaking into this other house, um, he ends up getting... He pulls on something, and he gets dropped into this area where this it's dog like, goes oh. after him. <laughs> the he dog's gets, name is Cannibal, by the way. Yeah, he gets cat piece. <laughs> Uh, sprayed in it on him and the dog goes after him bites his uh, leg he knocks out a drunken Santa Claus yeah <laughs> Ben Sleary punching a drunken Santa Claus freaking hilarious I love when he uh, threatens his um, co-conspirator the, the getaway driver he's like I'm going to pull out each one of your ball hairs one by one <laughs> when he calls him at the bar is is a, the fucking loser there <laughs> is there a fucking waste of life oh hilarious <laughs> Your turn. All right. Well, those are pretty good. Um, you know, so I, I did my own. Now, since everyone says, oh, I'll get into that in a minute, I have some runners up um, just because there were so many that I just wanted to put on here. I couldn't, it was hard to decide. So here's a couple runners up. There's a movie called A Christmas Horror Story. It's kind of an anthology film, it's a little more lower budget. It is fun, though. I mean, like, there's one story of Santa fighting zombie elves in the North Pole. It's just goofy fun. I enjoy it. Black Christmas, the original Black Christmas, not that shitty remake that came out in 2006. Uh, That fucking thing was horrible. Right, it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But the original one, it was pretty creepy. It's about a killer stalking a sorority around Christmas time. What I like about it is they never tell you who the killer is. That movie ends, you don't have any answers. But it is it is kind of a fun Christmas movie to watch. Yeah, I know it's you know serial killing and a sorority, but it's like seventies horror, so I get a kick out of it. And then one of the worst movies ever made, but just ties with Christmas. Jaws: The Revenge. Ooh, it, it's an irredeemable movie. But I will say. I can no longer hear the song The First Noel without thinking that scene of Sean getting eaten alive by the shark. <laughs> like you hear, you just hear the, because there's a choir on, on, on the dock singing this while he's out in the water getting attacked at night. No one knows it, but you just hear the Noel, Noel, and then you just hear, ah! So that has stayed in my brain since I was like seven or eight. So yeah, every time I hear that. So yeah, there's some honorable mentions. Now to go into my list, um, the first one I have on here, you know, I guess at the number five spot if we're counting to number one, mm. um, since Die Hard is considered a Christmas film, and I'm not going to argue with that point, how about the first Lethal Weapon? Yeah. It takes place around Christmas, too. Hey, we got a reoccurring actor. Yeah, Busey's on both lists. When he was oh, saying. This is the before, and that's the after. <laughs> <laughs> after what? I don't know, meth. <laughs> he's he's easy to make fun of, but also 
part of his crazy is he got in a motorcycle accident at one point, and I think it messed up his head. Oh, well, let, let's go on to something else. Okay, well, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Lethal Weapon takes place during the Christmas season, has Christmas music in it, too. And then a fist fight with, uh, you know, Gary Busey and um, Mel Gibson on the lawn, surrounded by Christmas decorations. I'm like, there you go. 80s Christmas right there. Yep. Um, at my number four spot, a movie called The Night Before, which has um, Seth Rogen, has um, the guy who played Falcon in The Avengers. Anthony Mackie. Anthony Mackie and uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And, oh, yeah, that's a great movie. Yeah, that, that's funny. I mean, it's not like it's not like comedic gold. Sometimes they do jump the shark. But I do like this thought about friends with a recurring tradition going out the night before Christmas and, you know, partying it up. Even though it's funny because Seth Rogen's wife is pregnant and he's mm-hmm. just like so freaked out becoming a dad. Like he takes a bunch of drugs and he's sitting there like doing a message to the baby like, fuck you, baby, fuck you. <laughs> you know, he's just like melting down. It is pretty fun. They're all wearing ugly Christmas sweaters as they're getting in all kinds of trouble. So I, I do recommend that. Number three, Silent Night, Deadly Night. I know a lot of people think... You know, it's a cheesy 80s horror movie, especially because they think of the sequel with that really bad clip, you know, Garbage Day. If you don't know it, you can find so many clips of people parodying it on YouTube. But the first, it's actually pretty well written. I know a lot of critics are like, oh, no, it's it's a serial killer at Christmas. We can't allow this. But it is a the killer himself has a pretty tragic backstory. And I think the characters actually work in this. And yeah, it is a horror film, but... You know, Christmas can be scary at times, especially well, when dealing I mean, with certain relatives. I believe it's actually the the one point of the year, uh, December is the month, uh, where there's an uptick in mass suicides. Not mass suicides, but suicides in general. Merry Christmas. Um, thank you for that, <laughs> bringing the episode down. My number one pick, Krampus. The one that came out in 2015. I know there's a lot of Krampus movies that came out straight to video. But this is like the official big budget Hollywood Krampus movie. That was directed by the guy who directed Trick or Treat. Um, It's just... I find it a fun movie. It's done the style of Gremlins. But it just shows... It's kind of like Gremlins meets the ref. You get like this really big group of people that are just so unlikable around Christmas time. And it, the legend of Krampus says Krampus will come and punish the wicked children. And this is the one he punishes adults too. But you get this whole build up to Krampus and they take Christmas themes, they turn them on its side like, you know, snowstorm hits. You think of snow on Christmas, but then this is like an ugly snowstorm. Like the ice and everything just looks creepy. It looks like it's its own creature. And, you know, Krampus jumping from house to house. And even the way he looks when he's actually revealed at the end, you know, people are like, oh, he just looks like Santa. I said, no, look real closely. Something's underneath that face that you see. He's wearing a dead man's face as a mask. And underneath is like this, you know, goat monster. It's it's fun. It's, it, it is mean-spirited, but it's mean-spirited toward mean people. So I do kind of get a kick out of that. So, number one, my, my new favorite Christmas movie is Krampus. All right. So, All right. now we're done talking about movies. We're going to talk about a couple games. There you go. Um, first, I will openly discuss uh, a movie, uh, that a game that came out uh, right, uh, I think, was it right after Arkham City? Um, Arkham Origins, the Batman game. The forgotten the, Arkham game. The, yes. It, it got a lot of crap. I, I don't like the way it did a twist when it came to Black Mask, but... It was it has, also buggy. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what turned people off, even though it's not... They didn't invest time to fix the bugs because Rocksteady decided we're going to work on the DLC well, for a, Arkham Knight instead. No, it was uh, wasn't Rocksteady that made that No, game. no, was, but they, uh, they were the ones overseeing it, and they said, oh, okay. don't bother, you know, because we're focused on this. So no, they, left but, it, they let it be buggy because they looked at it as a filler. Oh, to uh, wow, wow! They 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 sacrificed that game in the name of Arkham Knight. Good work, bravo, <laughs> bravo! Be the Batmobile. Fuck it. <laughs> another movie that. Uh, uh, well, you, another game. Sorry. I, I mean, I was going to say, did you have any more you want? To say um, about it had Knight? some of the best boss fights or in the Arkham series. Uh, Ar- Arkham series. Yeah, I mean, it had. I think it was mainly built on the boss battles. Um, de- the, the fight with Deathstroke is awesome. I will say this. The fight with Firefly is great. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Uh, the fight at the end with Bane's pretty good. It has one of the funniest both fights with Bane are pretty. Good. Has one of the funniest moments when you fight at well, electrocutioner. You just kick him once and he falls down. Uh, no one had any high hopes for that. Character yeah. anyway. <laughs> it's got a cool concept. Um, it's just the ending kind of got executed a little poorly with um, uh, the twist with Black Mask um, being actually Joker. And then Black Mask is now relegated to side quests. I think a lot of people that were investing into the uh, Arkham games were mm-hmm. hoping to see some more unknown um, Batman villains actually take center stage like Black Mask. They and, got uh, Anarchy. Yeah, and Anarchy, Anarchy's had got one of the best side quests in that game. That, that was completely awesome. Um, and it takes place during Christmas. That's why he's bringing it up. It's Christmas Eve. Because mm-hmm. uh, Alfred refers to it numerous times. He's like, oh, it's Christmas Eve. Do you really need to go out there? <laughs> and Bruce does. Uh, also, another another game I want to talk about is uh, Duke Nukem, the uh, expansion that you can probably have to look for on PC, like on other sites. Uh, Nuclear Winter, Duke Nukem versus uh, Crazy Santa Claus. <laughs> right there. there, That alone. Um, I'm a big fan of the Duke Nukem series, uh, especially Duke Nukem 3D. I think it was the best game that they did. Um. Basically, um, Santa's been possessed, and Duke Nukem's got to take him out. Now, unfortunately, there's a a version of that game that came out on the PS3 uh, years ago that uh, got discontinued and um, pulled off right as uh, the new Duke Nukem uh, 25th anniversary game came out with the five new levels of the new episodes that they uh, put in that, the new episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kane, Parasite Eve... It's awesome. And there's another Christmas game, this Parasite Eve. Resident Evil type horror on Christmas. Yep. It was was that was that all your games? Yeah. yeah all yeah. right. Well, then I will go into Christmas specials or even Christmas episodes of TV shows. We all like to watch these two around this time of year. And there's your typical ones, but here's some that maybe you don't think of too much. Um, I got a Twilight Zone episode called Night of the Meek. Art Carney plays a down-on-his-luck store Santa who finds a bag that magically has everything that anyone wants when he meets them. And it's it's one of those uplifting Twilight Zone episodes. Like, it doesn't... There, well, there's actually uplifting Yeah, there Twilight are. Zone I mean, it doesn't have that twist where there's aliens or whatever, but he just goes around. He becomes Santa Claus during one of the most depressing nights of his life. And you see... You see him start feeling better. It's so hard to not to watch that and not feel good watching it because no, you're like, positive. this this is a pretty positive thing. So, Night of the Meek, you, it's on Hulu. It's, I think it's on um, it's on a lot of streaming services where you find this Twilight Zone. So that's one, um, one that I won't say is unknown, but I don't hear too many people talking about it. And I do admit it, it is more for kids. Is it's a SpongeBob Christmas. I do like to watch it every year. It, they go back and do that old stop motion stuff that uh, Rankin Bass did, only with SpongeBob. And it's so funny because Plankton turns everyone into Bikini Bottom into like just jerks, except for SpongeBob because he's immune to it. And so he builds this robot SpongeBob to like start me- messing people up. So like when Santa gets there, by default, Plankton is the best one there. And then what, what does he want for Christmas? The Krabby Patty recipe. It's goofy, especially it has this um, fruitcake machine and everything. Um, and SpongeBob sings a Christmas song, Don't Be a Jerk on Christmas, which I think is hilarious. So. That is pretty funny. <laughs> it is, so there's, it's a SpongeBob Christmas. Uh, number three, Futurama's very own Xmas story. Oh, that one's good. Oh, if, you, if you're not familiar with it, in the year 3000, there was a robot Santa that was built to deliver gifts, but his AI was too harsh and judging good, so everyone was guilty. So he went on a killing spree. <laughs> he has a bazooka and everything. He like lives on Mars or maybe the maybe the moon. Neptune. Neptune. Okay. And John Goodman does his voice, and he's just so good at doing this evil Santa. Like he's taking glee into what he's doing. And I love. Like, Bender's going around with some orphans and they're robbing people, <laughs> like, when they're doing, like, Christmas carols and shit. And Santa, Santa like, accuses Bender of something. Bender's like, it wasn't me, it was him. He, like, points to the orphan. He's like, you would lie to Santa? That's so naughty, I'm going to put it on my list right now. <laughs> so, definitely check that out. It's, it's Futurama. They have fun with it in a sci-fi kind of setting. 
you know, Zoidberg actually is the only good one. So it's nice to see Zoidberg get something. Zoidberg. You're right. Uh, number two, Family Guys. It's a very special Family Guy freaking Christmas from season three, which has its own special within the special called... Oh, very Kiss Christmas, was it? Kiss Save Santa, but, you know, still the same. And I, I love how Peter keeps trying to watch it, and he keeps getting distracted. He can't watch it. So they go to the mall. He's, like, watching the window, and someone buys the TV. He's like, hey, I was watching that. The guy's like, calm down, buddy. It'll be on next Christmas. He's like, well, who the hell knows when that's going to be? <laughs> it has Lois keeping the peace until that very last thing just breaks her last nerve, and then she goes on a spree of wrecking shit. She actually sets Frosty the Snowman on fire. Ooh. <laughs> and, I mean... I, Stewie's trying to be good because he wants plutonium from Santa. So, I mean, it, it's Family Guy. It does, you know, back when Family Guy did humor, not the anti-humor they seem to be doing lately. It, it's, I do consider it a Christmas classic. And the number one Christmas special, and I'm cheating on this because it's every special this show has done, every Married with Children Christmas special. The first one had the parachuting Santa who's... Yeah. <laughs> His parachute didn't open. He just lands in the bunny's backyard. And they do that effect where the dummy just drops. It's the only time you see Ed O'Neill almost break down laughing on camera. So that was good. They did another one that was kind of like, you know, It's a Wonderful Life. I think it was called It's a Bundleful Life or maybe even, you know, Bunny's Roasting Over Open Fire. But it has Sam Kinison as Al Bundy's guardian angel showing him what life would be that like. There, it wins just because Sam Kinison. Well, right. <laughs> Because he's like, you know, he starts doing this, his shtick, you know, he's like, oh, you're Al Bundy, he looks up, he's like, no, he's doing the whole Sam Kennison yell, and Al's looking at him, he's like, oh, you must be one of my wife's relatives, can I get you a nice silver bullet? <laughs> <laughs> the jokes, the jokes work so well in this, even after all these years. And then I think, I think they did one more Christmas episode where Al and Peg are trying to watch like Christmas TV and they can't decide what's going on. Meanwhile, Bud and Kelly got them a jukebox and they're trying to get it in the house without them knowing. It turns into kind of a Looney Tunes thing where Bud keeps falling out the window and everything like that. But all three of those are worth checking out because it's Married with Children. And Married with Children is one of those shows that never tried to really do a moral at the end of the episode. It's just like, here's some crazy shit to take your mind off life for 30 minutes. And it worked, in my opinion, worked every time. So there you go. Christmas specials worth checking out. Back to right. you, Chris. Oh, we want to talk about some Christmas metal. We're going to talk about some Christmas metal. Well, the first band uh, I'm going to discuss, the first song I'm going to recommend is not a metal song. It's a punk song. So Okay. Uh, Ramones, uh, Merry Christmas, I Don't Want to Fight Tonight. Good song. Great song. Um, look, Ramones are like the, the band that, Every metalhead and punker like, so you should listen to them. They're great, and that's and, a great song. And the lyrics actually work, because, I mean, how many times are you at, like, a family dinner? There's always that one relative that starts an argument with someone else, but it's like, you know, it's Christmas, we don't want to fight. I, I think it works. I think everyone's been there at least once in their life. Um, I will also recommend the song Black Christmas by Venom. The, I like song, Venom a lot. A song that... I dare you to play at any religious Christmas gathering. <laughs> oh, or, or just show up with their merchandise, like a shirt of theirs. I can guarantee you're going to get weird looks. And then no Chris, no press, uh, black, sorry, King Diamond's No <laughs> Presents Today. for Christmas. That's another song I would recommend. That's a great song. King Diamond, I mean, again, not one that you can probably play around the relatives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are some Christmas metal songs. I have some Christmas metal songs, too. Um, th there was an album called We Wish You a Metal Christmas, and two of the songs on my list are off there. It's just one of those collaboration albums where they take different musicians, you know, different vocalists, guitarists, drummers, bassists, whatever, they team them up. Um, at number five, I have God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen off that album because it oh, has... Oh, with Chuck Billy. No. Oh. That's the one. Oh, Tony, I I Tony Iommi is doing guitars on it, so it has a very Black Sabbath sound to this and then Dio is doing the vocals mm, yeah. and you know Dio's my favorite vocalist so I don't think there's anything he can't sing and this proves it so there's that at number four I have Silent Night off that same album with Chuck Billy yeah, on vocals yeah, yeah. and Scott Ian on guitars and it is the most it's the loudest Silent Night you'll ever hear because Chuck Billy does like a death metal style 
it starts slow at first and it almost sounds like satire, but then it kicks into the thrash part and everything just comes together well. Sounds kind of like he, he sounds more like he did on uh, the album Low. Yeah. Oh, that's a good album. Yeah, and then, you know, Scott Ian, one of the best thrash guitars, one of the best guitars, period, especially like rhythm guitar. Mm -hmm. So they come together nicely. Um, at three, I have August Burns Red. They did a Christmas album. The cut that I like is Carol of the Bells. I mean, we know that Trans Siberian Orchestra really made that song good. And I'm not saying this beats that, but this is like a more metal version cover of that. It does tend to drift a little into the um, metalcore area with some wow. breakdowns and stuff, but I still think it works. At number two, <laughs> this is so over the top. Austrian Death Machine's version of Jingle Bells. If you don't know Austrian Death Machine, it's a parody band that writes songs about Arnold Schwarzenegger movies where Arnold is supposedly the lead vocalist. So they, Arnold did Jingle All the Way. We have Jingle Bells. It's over the top and goofy, but still pretty fun. And then at number one, I actually recommend this whole album, but at number one, Rob Halford's version of We Three Kings off of his Winter Songs album. Rob Halford did a whole Christmas album. And some are original songs, some are covers, and he works great on every song. But this is like the best version of We Three Kings I've ever heard. And I have to listen to it every Christmas season. Mm. So check those out. Um, speaking of Christmas, one of the best traditions for it Exchanging gifts, and I actually have one here oh, for Chris. Cool. Oh, cool. Thank you. Merry Christmas, buddy. All right. Open. Open. Oh, nice. Thanks. Hell yeah. This is one of the greatest four franchises ever. Thank you want to you. tell them what it is in case it's the camera? Phantasm. Uh, it's all four of the uh, Phantasm movies. I thought there were five. Five. All five. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. No problem. That's a oh, that's awesome. Right. Yeah. So I know we were very Christmas heavy in this episode because you know that's what we celebrate. I know a lot of you out there celebrate just different holidays around this time. So you know, I'm not only going to say Merry Christmas to everyone, but Happy Holidays. Whoa, you know? whoa, whoa! Fox would get mad. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so you know, like Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Joyce Kwanzaa. Just happy holidays. And if you don't celebrate any of that, if you don't celebrate anything around this time of year, I will wish you a very happy end of the fiscal year. It's, uh, it's very corporate. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I, know. Very I, mean, like, I don't know what, year. Uh, you know, ha happy 2019. So, so do you think Andrew Wilson says that <laughs> at EA meetings? Uh, he's not allowed to speak, remember? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, from everyone here at Chaos Springer Productions, we want to wish you and all of your family a very blessed holiday. Greetings, viewers. This is Corkscrew Tunic with Chaos Springer's Productions, wishing everyone a safe and happy holidays this Christmas season. Drive safe. Hello everyone, my name is Leanne. I'm the PR Communications Specialist at Chaos Springer Productions, and I'd like to wish everyone a happy holidays. Hey y'all, Johnny here. Just wanted to wish everybody a happy holidays, and just remember, Die Hard is considered a Christmas movie. Later. Hello everybody, I'm Mike Mann, and I just want to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. May the Force be with you. Hey guys, Happy Holidays! Hey, this is Lynn. And this is Reed. And we're here to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday from, from Chaos Springer Productions. Productions.